Okay, in this video we're looking at the history of Munster with the umlauts, must remember that, in Germany, not Munster, in Ireland. There is some confusion. I was born in this in this city in 1989, but it has a very, very rich history going back to 793 AD, when it was founded by Holy Roman Emperor, King of the Franks, Charlemagne. Um, he will come up a lot in a lot of the um, videos that we do on this channel. The cathedral does take a long time to fully complete to make it officially a city, and that is done in 850. Um, Heinrich III uh, visits in 1040, and he's a very crucial member of history as well. We'll come across him later on as he's the first king of the Germans, which is basically um, part of the Holy Roman Empire. It's a very complex system that they have in what is now modern-day Germany, in parts of France, parts of uh, Switzerland, parts of Austria. The Holy Roman Empire, a successor state to the Western Roman Empire in name only, as the Romans never went um, east of the Rhine, ironically. But... That is a very important period when a king visits a settlement that is giving it its seal of approval. Very important in medieval history when a king or, or prince or duke visits a, 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 a young city at this point. Uh, that is normally a very good sign that you're in favour with um, said monarch and you get uh, privileges. By the later Middle Ages, early modern era, uh, it's already become a prince of bishopric. bishopric. I can never get that right. Basically, the Prince of Munster is also the Bishop of Munster, which is a very common thing in the High Roman Empire, but very weird to people outside of um, Germany, basically, at the time. It's no longer a member of the High Roman Empire, it's now a member of the Hanseatic League, which is an a alliance of independent city-states in northern Germany and the Baltic, um, who are based their alliance basically on trade and mutual defence, much like the city-states in ancient Greece. Um, they become very wealthy and very powerful, and they trade all around the world, and that's where European colonialism starts, um, going to the New World. Um, the Hanseatic League doesn't last forever, and I will do a video on the Hanseatic League much later on, where all the cities in the Hanseatic League will be listed, and we'll discuss what happened to it. In 1534, there is uh, some of the beginnings of the wars of religion. Now, um, Martin Luther, being a Lutherism, you know, Lutherism, uh, he nails his demands on the, on the old uh, church door there, and um, Protestantism. Protestant Christianity is having its birth, and we're starting to see the wars of religion, where various crazed sects of Christianity are, including the Anabaptists, who are John of Leiden's followers, decide to have the Munster Rebellion, which is very bloodily and horribly put down many a burden at the stake to be heretics. They believe in the second coming of Jesus, um, and they're preaching stuff that Catholics and some Protestants don't believe in, and at this time, wars of religion is what is going on in Europe a lot, which leads, ironically, to the, col the colonies being established in North America and the Caribbean, which we'll get to in other videos. Just over 100 years later, in 1648, the Peace of Westphalia is signed, which is a very important uh, peace treaty. It ends two of the most brutal wars, religions, religious wars in Europe at the time in the Thirty Years' War. Oh yeah, and its sister war, the Eighty Years' War, they overlap, but that's how bloody Europe had been for the last century. The Thirty Years' War and the Eighties' War is very important for one important figure who we'll be looking at later on in Prince Rupert, Ruprecht, or Prince Rupert in English, of the Rhine. Um, he is a cousin of Charles I. He's also an uncle of Charles II of England, and he's a very famous soldier, explorer, and scientist. He's a very, very important man in both German and British history. He is a, he's been fighting for most of his life by this point, and he's still only in his late 20s he's been fighting since he's a teenager he doesn't know what peace is he doesn't have a childhood he is the swashbuckling cavalier general that we all know and love but he will come back to him in a later video part of this treaty is the area is exclusively roman catholic so protestants are expelled from this part of westphalia and the city it is to ensure the peace and to stop further conflict so it's a very pragmatic solution but you wouldn't see that today Peace reigns for a while. The university is established in 1780. Um, and then it gets a little bit complicated after that. We've got the Seven Years' War in this period as well, but it doesn't really affect Munster as, as badly as other wars have. But the university is established. But by 1802, this is where the Revolutionary Wars of, of France and Napoleon, so we have the Napoleonic and Revolutionary Wars, have started to get really full swing. It's conquered by Prussia in 1802. It stays a member of the Kingdom of Prussia, until 1806, when Napoleon decides to start fighting some of his wars of the Grand Coalitions, and it becomes part of the Grand Duchy of Berg, which doesn't last very long. It's a client state of Napoleon. That 
disappears and it is absorbed into the First French Empire under Napoleon. At the time, he's preparing for his war against Russia, which we will come to much later on when we look at Napoleon Bonaparte. But it goes back to the Prussian Empire after the defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Dresden and his defeat in Russia. It, the, the, the Confederation of the Rhine, which is basically a state that the Grand Duchy of Berg is a member of, was set up by Napoleon to ensure the alliance of the German states. That starts to switch sides. They go, we don't want to fight for the French anymore, we want to fight for ourselves, because this is where German nationalism has begun. And it goes back to the Prussian Empire, which it remains with until, you know, the end of World War One, when Weimar Germany is set up. From 1813 till now, it has always been part of the German state as we know it, in various forms. So the Kingdom of Prussia, the Empire of Germany, Weimar Republic, Nazi Germany, West Germany, and unificated Germany. So it's now been stably ruled by Germans since 1813. The sad point is, uh, in, 19, in 1939 and 1945, because there was, um, going back to the Hanseatic League, there's a lot of uh, oil refineries and industries related to that, it was heavily bombed by the Allies yeah, during the war. It was a strategic location, it was heavily bombed. Uh, it was finally occupied and liber technically liberated, but occupied by the uh, British forces at the beginning of April, just before Hitler committed suicide, and it was the occupied post-World War II by the UK Army, hence why I was born there. It became one of the bases of the UA UK uh, occupation zone, when uh, Germany is divided. Um, that's basically history as it is. Obviously, Germany gets reunif reunified in 1990 with the end of communism in East Germany and the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the communist Soviet Union. But for the most part, its history is, is pretty stable until about here. And then it gets a bit messy in the early modern period where there's a lot of changing of hands. And this happens a lot um, in Europe. Many cities will change hands multiple times. Um, its flag, which I have somewhere, and I will make a magnet of this. Uh, that is the symbol of the city of Munster. That is the flag uh, of, of this part of Westphalia. It is now the capital of, of Rhine-Westphalia. Um, I was born there in 1989. Uh, the British Army have now pulled out of that part of West Germany. I think all the British military bases are now gone. But the British military presence went from 1945 till pretty much last year. And there are still NATO military bases of non-German armies, mostly Americans now, still based in Germany, and that's an aftermath of World War Two, which we will get on to later on um, on the channel. But anyway, that's a history of Münster, Germany. Um, very interesting city, very beautiful city. It was completely rebuilt in 1950 in the style it was before 1939 as well. They completely rebuilt the city almost brick for brick in the style of in 1950. The, the city centre, at least the historical city centre, they completely rebuilt. And that is something that a lot of European cities had to do post-World War II. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Place your comments below and um, enjoy the channel and I'll have some more videos for you soon.